Hey, this is Mike, and you're watching Real Black, and today we're at the Philadelphia Film Festival number 24 with Jessica Edwards, the director of the new movie, Mavis. Now, we've come this evening to bring you some joy, some happiness, inspiration, and some positive vibrations. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever heard a voice like Mavis. If you're walking around thinking that Growing up in a black household in the 60s and the 70s, a staple singer is a part of my family's soundtrack. We're just coming out of a great screening. I love the film. I, I, I'm a big fan of, like, I'm sure a lot of people are big fans of right. Mavis, but n probably not aware of this whole career, yeah. 60 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, what attracted you to the subject? and? How did you get started? Sure. So um, I had uh, listened to the staple singers a lot when I was growing up, more the Stax era. Um, you know, my mom had them on vinyl. Um, but then I was reintroduced to her as a solo artist when she started performing and recording with Jeff Tweedy. I was a, a big Wilco fan. Um, and I had gone to see her perform um, in Brooklyn. And she blew me away. I mean, she's just, that's just like an incredible performer and so lively and inspirational. And, and the, all, the audience was like super diverse and young people and old people. It was just really a moving experience. And so I went home and I looked for the documentary about her life and there wasn't one. And so it's important to make films you want to watch. So we uh, set out to make it. Well, that, that's that's really important. Like one one thing that I really appreciate about, about the film is it's it's telling. Like a lot of times, you you get stories about musical figures, especially African American musical figures, and it's long after they pass. But here, you know, we get to she gets to smell her roses. We get to see it while she's still here and hear her story in her own voice. Yeah. Um, I mean, can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. I mean, I think that was sort of the big draw for me was that, you know, Mavis's history is so rich and her story is so incredible. I knew we were never going to pack it all in, but what was the most sort of po important part of it was really being able to capture who she is now. You know, the, the fact that she's still out there, that she's still performing these incredible songs, and that her message, this sort of positive message that the Staple Singers and Roebuck Pop Staples sort of preached was was really important for who we are as a community now. And so that was what I stayed focused on, you know. I really wanted to include Mahalia Jackson in the film and we weren't able to do that. There was a lot of other pieces of her story that I wanted in there, but we just kept coming back to the idea that Mavis now is 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 the best and the thing we should focus on. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer you know, and living, like she says in the movie, a living witness to so much history. I mean, you know, what what is it like just sitting, you know, by, behind the camera, by, at her at her heels, listening to her share all these stories? I mean, it was. I feel super blessed. I mean, I think we use that word a lot, but I, I truly felt very blessed to that she trusted us enough to really give us permission to help us to help her tell this story. Um, and I. I mean, I, I just, I, I truly thank my lucky stars. Um, you know, the fact that she is a living witness and that the, that the type of civil rights, um, you know, that, that we still need her. You know, I think that that was such a big part of who, where we came from in terms of the film was that we still need her now. You know, the civil rights for Mavis didn't end in 1968. You know, she's still out there. She still sings freedom songs in her shows. Those are a really, really important part of the message that she brings to the people. You know, she's a soldier of love, and that's what she wants people to, to hear, and I think we, we all need that right now. So. And I'm determined to go all the way. Until Dr. King's dream has been realized. In terms of your background, like you said, this is your your first feature. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm sure you've made films before. So um, I've made three short documentaries um, that we I've been doing for you know I've been making films for about six years. But this is the first long form that I've done, and um, the short films. Um, are on the internet. You can sort of see them, but um, but yeah, this is the first. This is the first long form, okay. and uh, well, ma masterful job. Um, but all right. So for for those who weren't here at the Philadelphia Film Festival, where can they catch up with Mavis? Yeah. 
So um, you can, uh, Mavis will be on HBO in February 2016, and a date will be announced shortly. And you can get in touch with us at mavisfilm.com. We also have a Facebook page, Mavis Documentary, uh, Mavis the Documentary. Um, so follow us there on all of our dates. And the film. we're, we're going to do film festivals for another couple of months before we air on HBO. And then, um, you know, we'll be out in Canada and Australia and England. So... The, the best thing is that you then get to go and like rediscover all of Mavis's amazing music. So well, I, I know what I'm, what's on my new Spotify playlist yeah. is Mavis Staples. And then when it comes out on iTunes DVD, I'm going to buy that for sure. It's definitely part of my collection. One, two, three, four, cry sometime as I go, I'm just a... I've weathered the storms. I have fallen down and I've gotten back up. My name is Jessica Edwards. I'm the director of Mavis, and you're watching Real Black. Somebody tape your two thumbs together. Your thumb, not your brain. You can't change your baby diaper. You can't comb your hair. You can't drive. Those two, right there, huh? That right there ain't nothing you can do. You can't unlace your shoe. You can't change your baby diaper. You can't cook those two. But they got you think it's your brain. For me, I feel that what Sydney was allowed to do in in the heat of the night was the start of black exploitation.